Hello everyone. I welcome you on board flight of Captain Vijay in series of flights to study meteorology for DGCA CPL and ATPL examination. Today we will fly through the sixth topic which is fog, mist, haze, visibility and RVR. So fasten your seat belts as we are ready for take off. Visibility is one of the most critical meteorological factor which every pilot encounters during flying. Good visibility always gives a pleasant feeling and poor visibility makes the pilots uncomfortable. History of civil aviation is filled with large number of accidents like CFIT, disorientation, unable to spot the runway for landing due to poor visibility. Visibility would govern whether the flight conditions are visual met conditions or instrument met conditions. It will also dictate the aerodrome minima or suitability of an aerodrome for landing. So knowledge of current visibility its trend and your visibility minimas is very very important in day to day flying visibility visibility is defined as the maximum distance at which a dark object can be seen by an observer with normal eyesight visibility is a measure of atmospheric clarity or you can also say atmospheric obscurity visibility in atmosphere reduces because of the presence of one of the three things first is water droplets in the form of fog cloud and rain second is solid particles like sand dust or smoke and third is the presence of water in the form of ice poor visibility is associated with stable atmospheric conditions like anticyclone coal inversion and light winds what is fog It is called fog when visibility is less than 1 km and the obscuring agent is water droplet and the relative humidity is near 100%. Mist. What is mist? It is called mist if visibility is 1 km or more, obscuring agent is water droplet and relative humidity is more than 95%. The upper limit of reporting mist is visibility of 5 km. haze there is one important difference between fog mist and haze and that is it is called haze if the obscuring agent is extremely small solid particles like sand dust or smoke and not the water droplets and the visibility is 5 km or less now let's discuss what are the types of fog first is radiation fog You must have seen thick fog in winters in early morning hours. This is radiation fog and it is caused by the radiation of earth's heat at night and the conducive cooling of the air which is in contact with the ground to below dew point temperature. So the conditions necessary to form radiation fog are three. First is clear skies. This helps in cooling of the earth in night. If it is a cloudy sky then the earth will not cool down. and the clouds will reflect the energy back to the earth high relative humidity this is to ensure that the slight cooling of the air will achieve saturation and the third condition is light winds of 2 to 8 knots this is required to keep the water droplets afloat in air if this wind is not there the condensed water will settle down on the ground as dew Radiation fog generally occurs in night and in early morning in autumn and winter. The latest time at which the radiation fog can form is about 30 minutes after sunrise. Strong wind as well as insulation that is heat from sun will lift the radiation fog and will improve the visibility. Radiation fog will always form over land and never over sea since the sea surface temperature does not change much due to the cooling effect in night and that is because of the high specific heat capacity of water second is advection fog in our lesson 3 on temperature we have already studied that advection means horizontal movement of air so adverse advection fog is formed due to horizontal movement of air so it forms when a warm moist air moves over the cold surface and achieves saturation or condensation this can either be overland or over sea unlike the radiation fog which happens only over the land 
conditions necessary to form advection adve 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 fog are three first is cold temperature with temperature below dew point of the moving air high relative humidity to ensure that slight cooling achieves saturation and the winds up to 15 knots this is required to move the warm moist air over the cold surface advection fog generally occurs in winter and in early spring over land and late spring and early summer overseas strong winds that is more than 15 knots as well as the change of air mass will lift the adve advection fog and the visibility will improve third is steaming fog steaming fog is also called arctic smoke it is formed only over the sea in polar regions it is caused when cold air from the land mass moves over warm sea this results in evaporation saturation condensation and formation of fog fourth is frontal fog frontal fog occurs when the warm front replaces the cold front which is also called occlusion and in this kind of fog the fog belt can be as wide as 200 nautical mile and this fog belt will keep moving along with the movement of the front last is orographic fog this is also called hill fog this you must have seen in the hill stations when the hill tops are covered with strati form of clouds in the morning hours presence of dust and sand particles in the atmosphere also reduce the visibility drastically the dust can be picked up at wind speed of more than 15 knots and sand at wind speed of more than 20 knots and visibility in dust storm may drop below 1 km also so how do we measure visibility apart from visual observation the visibility can also be measured by instruments and these instruments are called transmissometer or scopograph runway visual range rvr rvr has been worked out since the visibility value is most important at the place and in the direction of takeoff and landing so rvr is the max distance that a pilot at 15 feet above the runway which is approximate his cockpit height in the touchdown area can see in the direction of takeoff or landing and rvr is reported whenever the visibility drops below 1500 meters and the rvr is called irvr that is instrumented rvr when the rvr readings are instrumented and instrumented rvr values are reported at three places touchdown zone midpoint and the runway end now let's discuss some facts about the visibility by day visibility is good looking away from the sun and by night the visibility is good looking into the side of the moon visibility is poorer in drizzle than in rain and in night the visibility apparently improves if you dim your cockpit lights then you will be able to see better outside so hope this video has helped you in understanding the subject visibility in meteorology with this we have arrived at our destination hope to see you on board again for the next flight like share subscribe and comment if you wish happy landings